Hello and welcome. I'm Andreas Fertig. I work as a trainer and consultant primarily for C++. And I'm also the creator of C++ Insights. And this is also the tool I like to talk about in this series. In this episode, I will explain what C++ Insights is and give you a little introduction in where you can find it and how you can easily use it. So C++ Insights is a source to source transformation tool. That means that you put C++ code in and you get C++ code out. The difference between the two versions is that the latter one is enriched by all the things or at least a lot of things the compiler does to your source code. So like uh, ensuring that implicit casts are working, instantiations of templates, deduction of auto types, and a bunch of other stuff. So whenever you come across a piece of C++ code, you're not really sure what it does because it looks too abstract for you. C++ Insights may be helpful to reveal what's behind it. So it helps you to peek a little bit behind the scenes and to see all the cool things the compiler does for us on a daily basis, which is really awesome. We can directly get started. Um, C++ Insights has a web front end, so it's much like Matt Godbold's Compiler Explorer. You can put your source code in on the left side and you get a transformation out on the right and this transformation shows you the little things the compiler adds for you to your C++ code to make that thing compiling. It will also show you various other things like template instantiation and a bunch of other stuff we will talk in the upcoming episodes. But for now, let's work a little bit with the website. You have to accept or decline cookies. It depends on whether you can um, customize a couple of things or not. So I will go and say, yes, I accept that thing. And then as I said, you can type in your source code here on the left. And for example, you can do some modifications here and then you can hit the play or transform button. And then you see a slightly different version of your source code on the right um, for Sneak preview, you can see here array initialization. You can see how range based for loop transforms, and you can see um, things like implicit cast, all things we will discuss in upcoming episodes. You can also select which standard the tool should use, and you can jump in for a bunch of um, alternative style options. So to show what's going on behind for loops, so they are essentially while loops, you can do a couple of things to array subscriptions and you can show even more implicit casts, but we will talk about this in another episode. You can also say that you like to use libc++ by default. The website uses Linux and the binary was built with GCC, hence it uses libs.c++ underlying library. And there's also an option for transforming a std initializer list. It links to Matt Godbold's Compile Explorer. So if you click this button here, then your previous source code opens in Compile Explorer. And because this is new, I have to accept this, but I don't for now. So here and there is another button linking back to C++ Insights. But enough for this, um, there's also a quick bench button. So if you happen to have some code you like to quick bench, then this is also what you can do. You can create a short link for the code you showing here for easily sharing. If you do so, then your code will be stored on the servers storage, so keep that in mind. Don't hit any confidential company code in there. 
We can change the font size. So if the font size currently is too small, then I can increase it. You can save um, the current source and you can load another one from, uh, from disk. There are a bunch of other things. So you can go um, support a project on Patreon. You can see the current issues on GitHub. There's a belt page policies and some examples and setting and so on. So the entire tool is an open source tool. It's released under the MIT license. You can go to GitHub and check it out. It's GitHub and then my name Andreas Fertig slash CPP insights and then you get to the latest source code. There's also releases which are available. So try to create a release each time a new Clang version is out. So currently we have LLVM or Clang 10 released. So that's uh, the version uh, 0 0.5, which refers to this. But the continuous integration is the one which tries to keep up with Clang current. C++ Insights itself is a Clang based tool. So that means that all the things you see that it transforms for you, they will be with the eyes of the Clang compiler. Keep that in mind, even that you now can switch the standard library implementation that does only change um, yeah, your standard library types sometimes, but it doesn't change a lot of things. So it's still the case that GCC might decide to implement things a little bit different than Clang does. Essentially, it's an AST dumper. So C++ Insights is a Clang tool, you know, tool like Clang Tidy, which uses the AST, which was previously parsed and annotated by Clang and transforms this simply back to C++ code, which now sounds a little bit easier than it is. In some corner cases, it can be really tough. Aside from the website, you can also run the tool from the command line. Here I have previously downloaded the C++ Insights binary. It follows the Clang tool command line rules. So you have to specify the file name first. And I have a file here that says hello C++ Insights. And then you can pass other options like the current standard you like to use. And then you see the transformation here first, but it can also cut it. And this is a really simple example. It just shows you what's probably obvious. The compiler knows the size of this jar array we are asking it to create here for the string hello C++ insights. And we can now see that a jar array of size 21, which we could have probably figured out by just counting the characters in the string. You can here supply a bunch of other command line options the Clang tools usually take. What does make no sense is try to pass in here um, optimization hints. For example, if you like to say dash o zero or instead of that dash o three, that doesn't change a thing because optimizations and Clang happen in a later stage in the back end. And we are looking here at the front end phase. So it's essentially it has no impact if you're changing this. The binary you can download from GitHub is the same as it runs on the web page for Linux. It uses the latest stable Clang release. So currently that's 10 to build against that comes with the drawback that there are maybe not all the features, the latest features from uh, currently C++ 20 in it, because the latest version of Clang simply doesn't support them. I prefer to do this this way um, in comparison to use Clang current, because Clang current can be unstable and then it's hard for me to reproduce the errors if you report any. And I can just encourage you to report errors when you're finding them. I try always to fix them. It's not always possible and sometimes it takes time, 
But here on GitHub, you can see the currently open issues. Some of them are documentation. Others of them are bugs in the transformation and others are questionable transformations, I would say. So various things, feel free to report all of them. And at this point, please keep in mind that the tool in fact has bugs. I just don't know where they are. One goal of C++ Insights so far is to provide you with valid transformed code. That implies that the code that is spit out by C++ Insights in theory can be put back to a compiler and is compiling then. A few restrictions are there. So you have to put it into the same compiler you used to compile C++ Insights itself with, or at least use the same standard library because otherwise the types that are expanded are unknown. And as we will also discuss later, it's not all the time that easy, especially if it comes to templates. There are some special hacks I'm doing to um, keep the code compiling. The idea behind this is that compiling code makes sense because otherwise it's just uh, imaginary code that doesn't help that much. It can have more flaws and errors than when I can test it. And that's what I in fact do with each change in C++ Insights, they run a couple of tests and they try to verify that the transformation result in fact compiles with various compilers. I recently um, spent more time to improve the Windows support, so I don't have a Windows box on my own. If you happen to be a Windows user and like to improve things, feel free to send me a PR. That's it for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Bye-bye.